All right, we're going to have an extremely brief look at Kingdom Monra. What do we have here? We have bacteria which have three different basic shapes. There are some, some that are round. The term is cocci or coccus, singular cocci, plural. Round bacteria, rod-shaped bacteria, bacteria, singular bacillus, plural bacilli, and then spiral-shaped bacteria uh, called spirochetes. All right, uh, how do they reproduce? How does a bacteria cell reproduce? Well, we already learned in past units that bacteria cells have how many chromosomes? A whopping one apiece, right? And it's a large circle. Certainly not represented as far as how big it is with this diagram here, but that's okay. We understand they couldn't really represent it accurately. And so, what has to happen for a bacteria cell to divide, and how do they divide? Well, the process is extremely simple. The term is this, binary fission. Binary fission. Binary means in two. Fission means splitting. Binary fission. Bacteria cells don't do meiosis. They don't do mitosis. They do something very, very simple called binary fission. And here's, it's illustrated here in this diagram. What has to happen? Well, the one circular chromosome has to become two circles, and the cell needs to split into two daughter cells, each with its own chromosome. That's all we need to know. You don't need to all know all the details uh, below these pictures, but it's a simple splitting in two. The one circular chromosome becomes two, and the uh, bacteria cell splits in two. It's a process called what? Binary fission. Here's a picture from your textbook showing two uh, uh, bacteria cells. Well, it's almost two. It's one bacteria cell almost having split into two. And what is all this red stain stuff in the picture? That would be the one large circular chromosome. One large circular chromosome. All right, under ideal conditions, how often can bacteria reproduce? Under ideal conditions, which is plenty of food, room to grow, nice temperature, one bacteria cell can become two bacteria cells every how often? I think we've talked about this before. Every 20 minutes. You start with one, and after 20 minutes you have two. After 40 minutes you have four. After an hour you have eight, etc. They, re they can reproduce very, very rapidly. Now, where on or in our bodies are bacteria found? And so, I can do, do no better than read a couple sentences out of your uh, textbook here. And it says, outside, that's on our outside, we are covered in bacteria from head to toe with heavy concentrations in the armpits and scalp. Inside us, they exist in our nasal passages, in the vaginas of females, and most especially, in our digestive tracts, all told, perhaps 100 trillion bacteria cells live in or on the human body. And so, where in or on our bodies are bacteria cells found? Everywhere. And especially big concentrations in the scalp, the armpit, and in our digestive tract. Although lots of bacteria cells uh, in our mouths, bazillion of them. And so, uh, um, approximately how many bacteria cells live in our digestive tracts? We'll just say about a hundred thousand. About one hundred thousand bacteria cells living in our digestive tracts alone. And incidentally your book says that all the bacteria within us weigh approximately three pounds. That means when you get on the scales in the morning you go, oh no, you can at least say well, three pounds of that is not me. It's the bacteria living inside me, about three pounds of bacteria inside my body. And it says, uh, another question is approximately what fraction of our colon contents is bacteria? About half of it. About half of our colon content is bacteria. And uh, so, uh, wow, that's a lot of bacteria living inside us. Now, uh, finally, what is the term for the relationship between us people and the bacteria in our guts? 
the term is this, mutualism. Now, uh, all of us have heard about symbiotic relationships, symbiotic. Symbiotic simply means living together. Sometimes uh, living together isn't so nice for one of the partners. Uh, uh, there's a term called parasitism. When a parasite, you know, is drawing from the other half of the symbiotic party. And so, uh, but mutualism is a type of symbiosis in which both partners benefit. It's nice for both. Not just nice for one, it's nice for both. And so, uh, the relationship between us and the bacteria inside us is a good one for both. And your book explains why it's good for both. For, first, for the bacteria. Why is it good for the bacteria? Well, they have uh, they have plenty of food, you know, we keep the food coming down the pipe, and it's a nice habitat, nice warm, moist habitat for them to live in. Well, how does it benefit us? Well, as your textbook explains, it keeps our digestive tract fully functional. Without the bacteria, things don't work right in our digestive tract. It gives some details in your book. I'm not going to ask you those, but it helps, it, it provides the bacteria uh, stimulate a fully functional digestive tract. Also, when your digestive tract and my digestive tract are full of good bacteria, it helps keep the bad bacteria out. That's a very important function as well. And finally, a couple things your book mentions is that um, the bacteria in our guts, they metabolize sugars that we cannot, and they also produce some vitamins for us. So it's a happy, happy situation, all these bacteria inside us. And so, have we covered all the questions? I think we have. And so uh, that's it for Kingdom Monterey. That's it for bacteria. All right, bye-bye.